Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So, most of the times you have actually thought about making hair or, you know, trying to make something that you can use for games and in most cases you end up creating card hair or fiber hairs that you're going to convert from 2D objects to become 3D. Now, creating this thing can be a mammoth task as it takes you to create the hair itself, bake this hair into a 2D geometry and then convert this hair to textures and do so many other things with it. But today we have some exciting news as the folks from CG Power have created an amazing tool known as Fibershop. So Fibershop is an awesome tool set that they've made and this is pretty cool because it's just literally a brand new software that they just created. Now what this software would help you do is to preview, create and also manipulate your 2D cards and 3D geometry in real time. At the end of the day, you can now export these things. So without further ado, let's take a look at how this works as I'm actually going to head to get a fresh version that was just released today. So if you want to get this, link is going to be in the description where you can check it out. So with Fiber Shop simply open here, you would notice that the UI is extremely simple. So there are a couple of things you need to take into account. First of all, we have the viewport or the canvas where you can see your, you know, whatever you're making. And we have here that has to do with adding extra and extra, you know, you can add couple of things and depending on how much you stretch this you're definitely having even way more things to work with at the end of the day if you don't want all of this you just need one you can delete them so you can go ahead and delete this and then you can just stick with just this particular one you can choose to play with the setting that has to do with the lighting and you can also choose to switch this from 2d to 3d viewport navigating the 3d viewport is very very industry you know key map like as all you have to do is hold down alt and with the left mouse button, you can orbit. Alt with the middle mouse button, you can pan. Alt with the right mouse button, click and drag, and you can dolly in and dolly out, push in, push out, stuff like that. Right here, you would also notice that we have various settings that has to do with the viewport, document, maps, and also materials. So for the materials, you have a couple of material types that you can work with, but we're going to simply stick with the brown. So with this brown, you can also choose to tint this however you want. So for example, let's say we want to tint the root to be some sort of red. All right, that looks good. And maybe the base, we want to make it some greenish looking base or about the point like that. That is perfect. Now with this done, if you take a look over to this section where you get to see the design, this is where all of the properties that you're working with exist actually you even have access to creating modifiers and applying modifiers to these things and i'll walk you through how that is done it looks pretty easy but then there are certain things you need to keep in mind so with this here if you want to play with the width of course you can increase the width if you want to play with the depth you can increase the depth and if you want to play with the density you can of course play with the density of the hair now depending on what you want to work with you can also choose to play with the length and you can do anything that you want you want to increase the thickness you want to reduce the thickness that is totally up to you you want to see this back in 2d you can also switch back to 2d and see these things down here you'd notice that we have the thickness now this thickness also has a thickness curve which you can use to play with how you want the roots to be so if you want the root to be tiny or thick and you want the tip to be tiny you can do all of these things like so so we can actually go in and do something like this and now you get to notice what we have here generally now how does the modifiers work now the modifiers work in a very interesting form as if you select anything and you click and you go over to these five sets of modifiers you can use them to do your clump noise call bend and also scatter so let's take a look at the clump so once we throw in that clump right there we can choose to play with the weight of the clump so we can have that and if you're not comfortable having this set of weight of course you can make those changes right here and then because we already have the strength of the clump targeted all the way to one we can also drop that down just about something like that now if you will select this particular clump right here if you select the clump itself and you go over to add modify and choose to throw in a noise that noise would exist right here now if you want this noise to affect the clump only there is actually a workaround for that now this noise will affect the general fiber itself so you can increase all right the strength of the noise you can play with the length and if you want some randomness you can get those nice random stuff happening you can play with the shift just a little bit and then you can also choose to close this so, so you can click on the small space they have here to close that now if you want to have some clump noise how you do that is select the clump scatter 
click on the plus button and then click on the noise. Now that would add a clump noise and that is going to exist only within the sections that have the clump. So we can turn off the noise and then we can only work with the noise for the clump. So depending on what you want to do, you have all of that creative freedom and liberty to create some very interesting stuff. Next thing which we'd like to add is the coil. So let's drop this noise strength just about a point like that. Click on the plus sign, let's go back to main, click on the plus sign and add a bit of coil. So this coil is also something very nice, so we can add that coil. Let's punch this up a bit and let's actually turn that shift about something like so. Let's drop the, you know, the length, maybe about something like that. Yeah, that looks good. We can also choose to play with the randomness and also get some very cool things happening from there. Let's shift that randomness a bit, maybe about something like so. Let's also roll this tiny and there you can choose to preview this in 3d and you can see we have a wonderful looking hair now if you want to export this as a mesh yes you can and i'll talk to you guys about that but then because we want to deal with 2d cards how you can export this one is to click on the color filters which i think should be called bake and colors or bake and filters as you actually bake directly here so we can choose the size we want to bake if it's 2k 4k 1k you can choose that so let's stick with 1k and then click on bake map so this would go through and bake all the necessary maps that you want from albedo all the way to height so if you also want to add filters you can add a couple of filters but this is totally up to you and what you want but for now the bake simply does the job perfectly so we can now click on export now if you like to export the hair as a mesh you need to make sure that you click on fiber as mesh and this will export the mesh if you like to export the camera then you need to click on camera as well and this would export the camera other than that you can specify where you want the output folder to be and then you can simply choose the file format either png jpeg or tga and once that is done hit the export button and this would export everything out for you. Now, once this is exported, you would notice that within the folder that you exported the file to, you have two different folders and one file. Now, this file is .fib, which is the fiber shop here. And inside here, you notice you have your textures. And if you go to the next one, which is the cards, you also notice that you have your fiber card right there. Go over to your DCC app. For our case, we're gonna stick with Blender. Go over to file, go to import, and import the OBJ. Now for this case, we're going to simply import the OBJ file that we want to work with and let's drag that right here, card, fiber, and you have this here. Now once you have this going, the next thing you may want to do is to start shading and shading this one is very easy. So to shade this, you have to, you know, switch over to your shader editor. Let's dive over to Eevee so that we can see what we're doing. Switch over to your shader editor, click on the object. And then if you already have a node wrangler active, select your principal BSDF, click on the node wrangler, add a simple texture setup and let's select that. Click right here, make a copy. So let's do control C and control V, drag this one right down here. And I would connect this color to the alpha. Now if we click on open, navigate to the directory where you have your file type saved. So I have this file saved right here where we have the textures. Let's preview those textures real quick. So let's click right here, change this to thumbnail. And I want that for the alpha. So let's load this one in. And that's going to be for alpha. And for the image color, we'll do the same thing. And then I will select the albedo as the image color. And that will be loaded in. If you're working in cycles, you're definitely going to get, you know, exactly what you want. Of course, you can see that we have the fiber hair here. If you're working in cycles, we have that fiber hair here. But if you're working in Eevee, so let's simply switch this to Eevee, you would also notice that we have that, but we have all of this set to black. So how do you make this look good? If you go to options and change the blending mode to alpha clip, or you select and change the blending mode to alpha hashed, you're definitely going to get a cleaner results with this so it's now totally left you know it's not totally up to you to work with this however you want and of course if you're into game creation or hair creation you would know how cool this tool is and for sure you can create as much as you want and you can do so many incredible things by simply using this tool for your hair creation so just before we go something to keep in mind is if you're working with several modifiers you can easily click on this particular three buttons and you can use it to move the modifiers either up down 
and you know you can change the order of the modifiers of course you're going to get various results by simply doing this and again there is also a very tiny helpful thing that you might want to know so if you're thinking about exporting all of these fibers as 3d object to your dcc app i would also suggest that within the main scatter that you go down and also play with the segment so you can choose to play with the segment increase this reduce this other than that you are simply good to go and you can use this stuff to create 2d card hair and also create 3d you know fiber hairs that you can use for your games animation and all of those beautiful things so this is about it the fiber shop tool is here and a huge shout out to the guys at cgpal for making this one possible link to the download is going to be in the description and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace